I hope this is a helpful video for those who need it. Listen, folks, suicide's not an option. It's not an option. I'm a survivor. I've attempted several times, countless times. I don't know how many times I've attempted suicide. You know? I told myself that I would be dead by the age of 30. I'm 31, almost 31 and a half. I remember the day I turned 30. It was a really interesting story. I mean, just, well, it's not really that interesting to be honest with you. It's just on my 30th birthday, leading up to it, I was going through so many existential crises all at once. And it was like I was having a hard time processing it all. Because, like, I went through so many traumatic events, kind of like replaying my life in my head. Looking at old pictures, looking at old videos. You know, of course, not just my childhood, but also my adulthood, my transition, and all that stuff. It was a lot. It was a lot. You know, like... And on my 30th birthday, I eventually got to that point to where, you know, I was so tired, I couldn't even attend my own birthday party. I fell asleep. I, I wasn't even able to be there with all my friends. <laughs> Sorry, I did want to make that anecdote because I, I just want to explain that I get it, okay? I tried to kill myself since I was 15. I spent half of my life trying to kill myself. And you know, I think up until the age of 30, I, I tried to kill myself, but afterwards, I don't think I've made any actual attempts. Of course, they were passing thoughts, you know, passing kind of like, man, I really don't want to fucking deal with this anymore kind of thing, you know? But at this point in my life, I've gotten to a point to where it's not an option even. It's not. It just isn't. It's not. And I'll tell you why. Because the world is out to get you. Like, it is. It is. And, you know, my situation is not the same as yours. It's not, you know? My situation is drastically different than yours, okay? Maybe you're transgender like me. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're autistic like me. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're white like me. Maybe you're not. But we all are dealing with something radically different that maybe not a lot of people fully understand. But it is good to try to reach out to people who may, in fact, relate to you. It's good to have people who get you on a fundamental level. For me, it's other trans people, other non-binary people, other autistic, other autistic people. It is those people who have a basic fundamental understanding on what I go through. Maybe you're a person of color. Maybe you belong to a certain diaspora of some sort and you feel very isolated in this world. There are people like that out there for you. There are support groups. There are communities that you can reach out to. And this is so fundamentally important that you reach out, okay? Whether it be the, the National uh, Suicide Hotline or calling your friend, make sure you have people in your life who will check in on you. See how you're doing. You know, obviously it's good to do the basic things that are necessary to live on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know what? You can set little goals every day. Say you don't want to get the fuck out of bed. Well, maybe check your phone. Maybe check your phone and let someone in your life know that you're alive. You're still here. You're just not feeling great. Make sure you at least go to the bathroom. Make sure you at least get some water. 
make sure you at least have something nice to eat today. Something a little bit light on the tummy, you know? I understand we want to indulge in, you know, like, uh, comfort food, you know, big comfort food. Chicken nuggets, okay? I get it. That's my comfort food. But sometimes, you know, something lighter on the tummy may be better than having chicken nuggets. Maybe get a bowl of cantaloupe and just start eating pieces of cantaloupe, you know? Or strawberries. You know, something small, but not too heavy on the tummy. Because when you're having heavy tummy, you know, like full of food that's really fucking heavy, it might actually make your depression worse. Trust me, I'm a 10 year long bulimia survivor too. It's an ongoing battle from that, but that's something I'm continuously always working on. I'm holding myself accountable to that still. But yes, yeah, suicide's not an option, homies. Straight up. Because, as I said earlier, yes, the world is out to get you in some way. Okay? In some way. There are people in this world who do not want you to succeed. People don't want me to succeed. They're passing laws right now trying to fucking get rid of my rights to medical health care. People don't want me to succeed. Which is kind of fucking sad. What makes it you any different? We're on this planet. We're dominated by the same fucking hierarchical, unjustified state. So why are we any different? Maybe on a socioeconomic class level? Sure, we are different. Maybe from our cultural background? Yes, we are different. But we are, at the same time, breathing the same air in this, in our own, we are the same species. We are homo sapiens. We are walking the same planet and our planet is so wonderful. There's so many wonderful things about our planet that are worth living for. Do you like to tell stories? I'm sure you do. You might just say, no, I don't like to tell stories. I don't like telling stories. Well, you like listening to stories? Well, whether you like to tell stories or sh or share stories or even like just fucking, you know, listen to stories, there are people to talk to that will tell you these stories about their lives. Maybe you can also create your own story, your own narrative. And I think it's important that you do things like that. Maybe journaling a little bit. And, and I'm bringing this up because like, Journaling really helps, okay, especially on a consistent level. Now, some people may say, oh, well, I can't journal because uh, my handwriting is bad. Well, first of all, don't give a fuck about your handwriting. If you can read it, you can read it, you know. But even more importantly, if you don't want to write in a journal, maybe just type it on the computer. Type it on your smart device. You can journal in all kinds of ways. Start a social media account where you specifically journal. Maybe, you know, get involved in some kind of artistic in, uh, endeavor that is on a consistent basis that you have fun doing. Music, video games, uh, you know, drawing, painting, sculpting, you know, making pottery and all that stuff. Like, there is so much you could give to the world. But ultimately, here's the real thing, right? You need to find your reason to do that. I know that's hard for you to, to do with this state, especially if you are feeling suicidal. I do fundamentally, first of all, want you to get help. Like, just look for help. Try to seek psychiatric help if you can. Try to get, like, talk to a psychologist, of course. Because the psychologist will want you to work through these troubling times. But also get like a support network. Friends who you could trust. Even write their names down on a sheet of paper if you need to. A support network is important for this type of stuff. But also just like find your meaning in life. You know? You know, just 
try waiting an extra day to try to see if you can find your meaning in life. I know it's not easy. I know it isn't. I know it isn't. Okay? I mean it. Listen, I'm, t I'm, I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not funded by anything, okay? I don't, I don't have the fucking CDP fucking or CDC like fucking, you know, funding me to tell you this shit. I'm not paid by the fucking government to tell you this shit, okay? I hate the government. I'm a goddamn anarchist, okay? I'm not here to, to tell you something like as some PSA from like the goddamn state or whatever, okay? I'm a goddamn survivor of both self-harm and suicide. I'm a survivor. I know it's not easy, okay? And I want you to understand at the fundamental level that you matter. You need to walk this fucking planet so that the people who want you to not succeed, that they are the ones who go first. That they are the ones who leave this world first. You need to outlive your goddamn enemies. Outliving your enemies is the most important thing in the fucking world. At least for me, on a subjective level. That is my purpose. Who is my enemy? Well, I'll list a few. Andrew Tate. I want to outlive that motherfucker. And I am so fucking confident that I will outlive that motherfucker. I don't, I don't want to fucking die. I will be mad if I die. <laughs> and I will take it out on God too. I will make God, I will make God pay for that if I die before him. He better be fucking scared because I'm going to live longer than that bastard ever will. Catholic priests. I hate Catholic priests and they are my enemies. If you are a Catholic priest, you better fucking watch out. I will never treat you like a, like a normal human being. You have wronged me and millions of children worldwide. Pedophile fucking fuckfaces that you are. And you have all the lobbying power to protect yourself and your hiney ass from being sued and held meaningfully accountable. It is systemic. And then there's fascists. I fucking hate fascists. They want me dead too. Neo-Nazis want me dead too. Conservative Christians want me dead too. Well, a lot of conservatives are dying these days. They're either growing really old or they're dying of COVID-19 or something like that. But the problem with, with that is that either, you know, it's, we, don't, we shouldn't have COVID-19 in the first place. It's them who are causing their own death by not wearing a mask, but they are also inadvertently causing other people to die as well. And then also, we really shouldn't have to wait until they're 99 fucking years old for fucking Rupert Murdoch to die. So I do want to outlive these people. Like, just saying, I'm trans. I deserve to outlive these motherfuckers. And it's just, it's people like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, for me, I'm just being anecdotal here. For me, I'm just saying that's my reason for living. I am too damn important. I am more important than Andrew Tate. I am more important than any fucking pedophile, greasy ass, pedophile Catholic priest. I am more important than any inbred, sister fucking neo Nazi and fascist. I am more important than any shriveled up raisin conservative who has no bearings on what boundaries and consent are in the first place. Which is why they get away with so much sexual assault these days. Especially people like Greg Abbott, who thinks that it's okay to, uh, to ban abortion even in cases of rape because you can reverse the rape somehow. Or you can reverse the pregnancy if it was a rape. That's what he believes. He is an elected official. He is a governor. And he believes that shit. Like, I want to outlive him. He's in a wheelchair. He shouldn't be in a wheelchair. Other people need that wheelchair. These are things that we can actually fucking live for. We can live to see another day where people in wheelchairs can actually afford wheelchairs. And maybe Greg Abbott can fucking die in a hole faster. You know, I'm just saying, if these human beings are actively doing a net negative, especially holding one, per, like, what, like, these one percent of people holding 99 percent of the wealth, and, and especially a monopoly on violence, backed by state police surveillance, 
then maybe, just, I don't know, maybe we deserve to live and they owe us. They all owe us. The United States is stolen land. There's no such thing as an illegal immigrant on stolen land. Unless you consider me an illegal immigrant because I'm fair skin. I'm from Europe. Well, I'm not from Europe, but I'm actually from the U.S., but like... My ancestors are from Europe. But, you know, whatever. It's American exceptionalism. Anyway, listen. There's a reason for you to live. I may not have given it to you today. Maybe I have. But there is a reason for you to live. And I hope that, I, that you, in some way, shape or form, find it. I'm telling you that even if I didn't give you the answer, I hope I provided the launch pad for you to find that answer. I hope I did. Anyway, fuck the state, you matter. Bye.